Hey guys, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Get on screen here, knife. <laughs> Guess what? It's Cheap Knife Week Volume 2, baby! Um, last time I did the series was a while ago, probably about six, eight months ago. It's been a while. Um, and back then, uh, we, we took a bunch of different knives, five knives, that um, were kind of aimed towards uh, non-knife people. We were looking at and reviewing knives that a non-knife person was likely to buy. This week, or I guess this time around for Cheap Knife Week, I want to look at knives that people might buy if they're kind of dipping their toes into the, the enthusiast world. Knives that provide interesting things that a knife enthusiast, that, 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 that a beginner would want to experience. Because I remember when I was just getting into the enthusiast community, I remember there were several things I wanted to try out. You know, I want to try axis lock. I want to try different back locks. I want to try different steels. I wanted to, what the hell are bearings? And I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So for Cheap Knife Week, this time around, we're still keeping everything under $30 but we're going for a little more variety, things that, you know, someone just getting into the knife world would want to experience without paying a whole lot. So, the first knife we're going to take a look at is this K-Bar. This is the K-Bar Mule, and this was loaned into the channel by old Tonto Guy. TRW in the comments. Say hi to him down there, guys. And, uh, yes, old Tonto Guy loaned in a Tonto. How very fitting. So, I appreciate him sending this in. He's loaned a bunch of knives into the channel, and he is he's a really, really good friend. So, let's go ahead and measure this knife here, all the way back to the scaled blade length. We're coming in at like, oh, 3.9-ish, right around there. Big boy knife. This thing also weighs about 10 ounces. Um, yeah, keep that in mind. <laughs> so, it's, it's a big boy. Let's go, to bring, go ahead and bring out our size comparisons. There is the R2-D2, and there's the RAT1. So yeah, remember what I said about uh, it being a big boy? <laughs> I was not kidding, guys. I was not kidding. Big knife. Alrighty, let's go ahead and bring out our Civivis. There's the Praxis. There's the Elementum. Also, the, kind of one of the purposes of Cheap Knife Week is to kind of look at some obscure knives. So I didn't want to just, you know, I think a lot of people just getting in, into the community will probably go and buy a Civivi uh, as one of the things that they're going to try out. But we've reviewed a lot of Civivi on this channel, so we don't need to go there. I was going to compare it against some knife world staples, the Bug Out and the PM2. And uh, you know what? I'll go ahead and close off size comparisons there. What are the materials on this guy? Well, it is a back lock. We have steel bolsters, G10 scales. Excuse me. There's a couple different blade shapes. This one is obviously the Tonto. And the blade steel, I saw some sites listing it as 7CR17 and other sites listing it as 420. Which, if I'm remembering my steel analogs correctly, 7CR is, you know what, Gideon, you have a computer right here that has Google on it. Let's go ahead and get some Googling done. Let's see here. Ah, 7CR17MOB steel. I think, I think, ah, 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 da, 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 da. hmm. Let's go to this site here, see if we can find analogs. Don't you guys just love uh, da, 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 me Googling things off screen? Isn't this entertaining for you guys? Okay, that site's not saying anything. Okay, I, whatever. 
I'm not sure what the steel is. It's not great, but yeah, there we go. Alrighty, so before we get into the cutting footage, when uh, this knife was loaned in by TRW, he told me, he said, Gideon, I want you to test it. I want you to beat the crap out of it. And I said, okay, I, I will do that. And so you guys know that I work as a, as a cowboy in the summers, and so I'm in the woods a lot. Uh, I do a lot of things with that job, not just cowboying, but, you know, I do, I do a lot of stuff, bushcraft stuff. And so I decided, you know, I'll take this out in the woods one day and, you know, do some testing with it, do some batoning and stuff. And so I was doing some review cutting uh, one day, and I had this knife. I said, you know what, let's go ahead and do the testing. So uh, we did the review cutting, and then we, we, we tested it. And, um, yes, you will, you, you will see that. Let's get to it. All right. Before we absolutely destroy the K-Bar um, mule, let's go see ahead and see what its capabilities are. So the blade is 7CR steel. Uh, not so good. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the action. I can flick it out, it's a back lock. Um, on the closing, uh, but you know, slow rolling and the two hand close, um, it's not bad. It actually does feel pretty consistent. Um, not amazing, not terrible, pretty backlocky. There's about it. How are the ergonomics? There's a lot of handle, and um, my gosh, there's a lot of handle. C minus on the ergonomics. C minus. I'm not even sure really what to say. That just it gets wide really quick, and I don't know. That just doesn't work good for my hand. But it's also not like atrocious. It doesn't make me mad. So there we go. How does it carry? Well, the pocket clip is reversible, which is awesome. That makes this a completely ambidextrous knife. Um, oh, and by the way, it is centered. We will see if it remains that way after what we're about to do to it. Um, but the, the carry. Let's go ahead and get to it. The pocket clip isn't bad, but uh, like this knife will take your pants off. I've got to have my belt really secure because this is a heavy knife. Listen to this. It dented the wood. Very, very heavy knife. Um, the carry, and it's very wide. You've got to be prepared to carry this if you're going to carry it. So, let's go ahead and get to some cutting. Uh, 7CR steel is not amazing, but at this price point, it's not terrible. Let's get our double wall cardboard. You know what, actually? So again, double wall cardboard. It went through that pretty nicely. I am You know, the blade is not as thick as you might expect it to be, so that, that helps. But yeah, really good there. I'm actually fairly surprised. It got through that as easily as it did. Okay. A little bit of a pull through. Woo! That felt nice. I bet it's gonna do great at these pushes. Tontos usually do, let's see. what I tell ya? Yep. One push is all you need and you're through. So yeah, really nice there. If you're working with a lot of thick rope, this might not be a bad knife for the job. Let's see how well they did the grinds. What the heck? Okay, so that was not perfect. Um, you can see here this noodle is a little bit wavy. We kind of ripped a little bit there. You can see the pattern left behind here. It, it, it's definitely, it, it's not an even grind, 
but I was expecting it to be a lot worse. I'll be honest with you, I was expecting it to be horrendous. Interesting. There is a little bit of wiggle in the blade. So, a little bit of that, but uh, you know, that actually performed a lot better than I was expecting it to. I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm kind of shocked, to be honest. All right, let's go beat the crap out of it. Alrighty guys, it's time to torture test the K-Bar Mule. So this knife was um, loaned into the channel by a very generous viewer and a good friend of mine, old Tonto guy, follow him on Instagram. And um, don't worry, I do not usually torture test items that people loan into the channel. But old Tanto guy requested that we torture test this knife. Kind of hurts my heart, again. I don't like torture testing other people's stuff, but since old Tanto guy is such a good friend, a great supporter of the channel, and he requested it. Reggie, this goes out to you. Let's start simple by just chopping out some of these cottonwood shoots. Not a bad pruner, if I do say so. Here's one that's dead and a little bit thicker. See what we can do here. Well, there's a lock failure. A catastrophic lock failure. I think he's dead. Um, you know, one of the things that Reggie said to me, we were talking on Instagram and he was telling me about this knife and how he wanted me to test the heck out of it and he said, hopefully you'll loosen up the action a little bit. Mission successful? I have no idea what happened here. I guess we'll take it apart and find out, right? I made a backlock into a gravity knife. <laughs> Um, I will say though, before he kaputted on us, uh, actually chopping fairly well. Uh, I should have been wearing gloves because he did come back and get my finger, but the edge is, excuse me, the edge is a little bit obtuse and didn't cut me hardly at all. Just a little nick, but he tried, he tried to take me down with him. Um, 
but actually was chopping fairly well. Um, I was trying to chop as hard as I could. I wasn't really that concerned with accuracy, but uh, it was not doing bad. Um, let's get another knife and finish off that chop just, just to see what happens. Looks like I brought a K-Bar to a cold steel fight. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's avenge our fallen mule. I still don't have any gloves on. Ah, that's okay. That's pretty tough, not gonna lie. Oh boy! Oh, my arm's getting tired! Ugh. Ugh. Mule, you have been avenged. Love that knife. So yeah, um, <clears throat> that, 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 that's not supposed to do that. So you might think that just because it, it, it failed spectacularly and tried to cut my finger off that I would just give this knife a bad review. But I actually think this knife has some merit to it. So I do want to give it a serious review and I, there's actually a lot of good things about this that, that I want to get into. So. Before we do that, we, we, we do have to address this. <laughs> we, we have to address this. So this knife comes in about 25 bucks. And I mean, this was, the, the, I mean, obviously this was not good, but what I was doing with the knife is kind of not really things you want to do with your folding knife. Unless it's, I don't know, like a cold steel. In which case, I also want to make this point. $25 generic backlock does not equal $200 triad lock. Okay? So, just want to want to say that. And actually, I think in the, in the video, I ended up finishing off the cottonwood uh, sprouts with the cold steel engage, I think. But... I was d being dumb. I was definitely being dumb. That was kind of the point. And yes, it failed where other knives may not have failed, but you know, keep in mind, 25 bucks. Okay, so this is bad, but we were kind of pushing the knife beyond its expected parameters, right? Let's go ahead and talk about some of the good stuff. So this is a big, chonky knife. The blade is actually not that thick, though. Let's go ahead and bring out the PM2. 
very, very similar blade stock thickness. This knife is not very thin behind the edge, but that's okay because this knife actually cut really well. I was very surprised by how well this knife cut. And it's also a very tough blade. Um, you saw in the uh, cutting footage when we're crunching down through the rope. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that a lot of knives struggle to do that test. I just do one push and see how far the knife will go into the rope. A lot of a lot of knives struggle to do that test, and this one did it very well because it has such a thick, robust edge. But the blade stock is thin enough that you can still slice good even with that uh, robustness behind the edge. So I think that's good. Also, you do have a hollow grind here. It's not a very deep hollow grind, but it is a hollow grind. So yeah. Uh, next thing, the Tonto. Um, this is a really good blade shape. If you have never carried a, an American Tonto, uh, it's really good. You get this, like scraping, you get good piercing, you have a secondary tip for your, your utility cuts. This has an ever so slight recurve on the straight part. Um, but you know what? You get really, really good slices like that. So yeah, overall, just really, really good blade. The ergonomics on this knife are completely neutral, and so they're they're pretty good. We'll come back to ergonomics later, but you know, they're pretty good. There's some good jumping here. Actually, if I hold the knife like this with my thumb on the lock bar, I mean, I could still technically use this knife. Like, it won't close. So, you know, I guess I could also take, like, electrical tape and, like, I don't know, twist it around there, make this into a, a fixed blade. Maybe I'll just, like, get some wire. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, the ergonomics are fine. Next thing, this knife is completely ambidextrous. They have a clip that is reversible. Dual thumb studs. It's a back lock. Full ambi. I think that's really, really cool, especially at the price point. Awesome. Uh, what, uh, I think this knife is something that a lot of, um, new people to the knife community might be drawn towards because it has the K-Bar branding. That's a lot of, that's very attractive to a lot of people. So, you know, yay, it's a K-Bar. You can get a K-Bar. Hooray. The G10 here is actually really, really good. I like the texture. I like the little milling they have in here. It's very grippy. It's nice. I also like the little get, like the scoop outs right here in the G10 that allow you to get to the thumb stud. Um, I just think that that's a really cool little design feature. It's good that it, it's nice that they included that. They didn't have to, but they did, and it's 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 nice of them. You know, this knife was perfectly centered when it got to me. A little bit of blade play, but not bad. And TRW told me that he thought the action was really tight and stiff when he loaned this in. I actually thought the action was. I mean, not great, but fairly decent for a knife of this caliber and this kind of price tier. And so, yeah, I was not upset at that. Alrighty, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into some uh, get into some negatives. The biggest negative with this knife is just the sheer weight and bulkiness of it. <laughs> Uh, and this is coming from someone who doesn't really care that much about weight. If you guys have watched my channel for a while, you know that I'm not a huge snob when it comes to weight. But I want to I illustrate something. So this knife is 10 ounces. Yes, you heard me correctly. 10 ounces. Here's another 10 ounce knife. These two weigh about the same. I've carried this knife a lot. Uh, working in the woods, I've EDC'd this a lot. This knife, I really struggle to carry. I carried it around the ranch. I carried it to work a little bit, but it was just hard. Why? Those two knives weigh almost the same. It's because the Formax is just balanced better. It spreads that weight out more. This knife, all that weight, Let's see if we can find that balance point. <laughs> it's just so dang heavy. The balance point is about right about there. That's way too far back. Um, this There's just a ton of weight here. And a lot of it feels pretty unnecessary. Like this thing, this is such a solid little brick of a knife. Like, I would be terrified of dropping this on my bare foot. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at my house, I'm looking at my knife collection, I pull this out of the box, and oops, I drop it on my foot. 
Even if the blade doesn't pop out and stab me, I'm probably going to the ER with like several smashed phalanges. Um, although, I might be just like, like too embarrassed to go to the, the ER. You know, hello sir, what happened? Oh, I dropped a knife on my foot and shattered it to pieces. <laughs> but, very, very heavy, and a lot of that weight feels unnecessary. Like, what the heck is this here? Like, what, what is that huge just flare-up? It doesn't really help the ergonomics. I, I, I don't know what they were thinking with this here. Because it just adds a lot of material. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the ergonomics more. I know, I, I, I said earlier how they're very neutral, and that's good, and they are indeed neutral, and that is indeed good. Uh, but... <laughs> Look how much knife I have left over. And I, I don't have huge hands. But, uh... Jeez. Choke back here for the chopping that you can't do. Um... When you're holding the knife, like if you're going to be using the knife, this is the most natural way to grip it. And you just have so much of a counterweight back here. And... I don't know. It's just... I don't understand why it gets so fat up here. When you're carrying the knife, that really makes it hard to keep in the pocket. Uh, this thing should come with its own holster <laughs> because, oh gosh, that's just, it, it, it is incredibly chunky. I, I cannot stress that enough. It is incredibly chunky. Hmm, that pivot screw is wiggling. Oh, wow, I'm free turning it with my thumb. Okay, I'll go there and then to there. So free spinning pivot, that's... Ooh, that's scary. Like, <laughs> yeah, let's see if I can just do it with... Okay, anyways. Um, and then let's go ahead and talk about the lock failure a little bit. Um... I did expect that that I would break this lock when I was testing it, um, but I thought that would happen when I went to baton something. I, I thought this lock would fail when I was batoning. The fact that it failed during just like some chopping stuff, while I'll, I'll, I'll grant you that is still pretty dumb, um, that, that did kind of surprise me, and that kind of, I was like, whew, that's, that's not good. Again, being dumb. Um, alrighty, so let's go ahead and go on to the final conclusions. You will notice that just like the last time I did Cheap Knife Week, there are going to be some things that I don't really, like fit and finish issues, you know, I won't really count against a knife because we're dealing with, you know, a low price tier. So there will be a couple of things that if they were just on a more expensive knife, I'd definitely call them out on it, but I'm going to let slide here. So let's go on to my final conclusions. My final conclusions are actually positive. I was very impressed with the way this thing cut and performed. Um, it did a lot better than I thought it was going to, and I think that's really, really cool. If you can get around the weight and just awkwardness of the knife, I think the K-Bar Mule could be an interesting kind of beater knife for people. You know, obviously don't like, you know, baton with it, don't chop with it, but you know, if you're just using it like I don't know, I was thinking for me, when I'm at the ranch, um, you know, in the barn, in the hay lot, you know, cutting your hay, your baling twine and, and stuff like that, um, yeah, I think it would be pretty good. It's just way too heavy. That's really the biggest complaint. I can see that K-Bar really put some effort into designing this, though. You know, like the, the, the little scoop outs here and stuff. They have a bunch of different versions of this knife. They even have a newer version uh, that's a little more expensive, but, you know, we're not talking about that one. Uh, K-Bar tried. They, they really tried to give you a good knife. And at under 30 bucks, I actually think it's semi-recommendable. I think the weight is going to be a big issue for some people. Like, I showed this to my dad at a, at a family dinner, and he was like, oh my gosh. He said, who would make this? And who would carry this? He was really, really just disgusted with the weight. But then Austin, you guys remember Austin, I hand this to him, he's like, oh yeah, this is nice, this is badass, I like this, I like my knives heavy. I was like, yeah, of course you do, Macho Man Austin. And, uh, you know, different strokes are different folks, I guess. 
Um, so yeah, if you can get around the weight, this knife is semi recommendable. Um, the failure, the lock bar failure here is, you know, again, since it happened during the chopping and not batoning, it's a little bit disturbing to me, but, um, you know, I'm sure that if you're, I'm going to sound like metal complex here. If you're just doing regular stuff, you should be fine. And, and I agree. One thing I forgot to point out too is that they have like the little dip here in the lock bar, which makes it easier to depress it. All right now the lock bar is super easy to depress since you know there's like the, the little spring in there it went flying away. So yeah, but there's the K bar mule. <laughs> um, yeah. What are we going to be taking a look at tomorrow? There we go. There's your sneak peek. Until then, I've been Gideon. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow.